everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Jones and Four Show. Today, we have a special guest with us today to help encourage you to live your life to the max, help out, reach out, and help other people. But before I get to introduce him, and before you get to know more about him and his mission in life, his goals in life, I have a question for you. And that is, when tragedy strikes, strikes you personally, your family, or your community, or the country, or world, when tragedy happens, what do you do? Do you let it sink you down and get down into the valley, or do you let it strengthen you? Do you find a way, do you find the positives in that situation, or find ways of helping the people who are uh, struggling through that situation? Well, I'll leave it there for the moment. You think about that throughout this interview, because I think you'll be surprised what our guest has done to help others. So without further ado, let me introduce our amazing guest, Nate Carroll. Thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's You are such an inspiration to me, and I'll share with the audience how I got to know you a bit, is one of my former co-workers uh, suggested, as I, when I started out this show uh, over a year ago now, he said, you know who you should have on for your podcast and show is Nate Carroll. I'm like, okay, why? Who is this guy? I'd kind of heard the name. Well, he is a guy who's on a mission to do push-ups. But it's so much more than push-ups. Uh, last year, when I heard he was doing one million push-ups in a year. That's right, one million. No, 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 not a thousand, not a hundred thousand, a million push-ups. First of all, wrap your head around that. Now, that was last year. This year, he's taking it to a whole new level and doing one and a half million. Yeah, 1.5 million push-ups in a year, which breaks down to, what, 4,100-ish a day? 4,111. Yeah, do all those push-ups. <laughs> but he's not just doing it because he likes push-ups, right? He has a mission to it. So, Nate, first of all, tell us, first of all, why a million push-ups and a million and a half, and then why are you doing all this? So, last year, the kids and I started the Thanking Law Enforcement Challenge, and it consisted of thanking police officers all across the country, all 50 states and all 3,142 counties. Mm. And so, as I was kind of coming up with that, I was trying to think of ways to maybe make it a little more exciting, maybe um, catch a little more attention. And I've always been kind of interested in push-ups. And so I started thinking about doing push-ups. And so I, this was probably about six or seven months out from when the, our, our Thanking Law Enforcement Challenge started. And so I started thinking like, well, maybe I'll do 100,000, maybe I'll do 500,000, just kind of doing the math. But then I figured I've always wanted to do a million push-ups in my life. And um, up until that point, I had kind of logged, you know, probably, you know, maybe 50,000 a year or whatever it was. So, and because uh, again, my, my goal years ago was to finish a million push ups in my life. But then I started thinking, like, well, why don't I do a million push ups in a year? Hmm. And uh, so I started training, preparing, and uh, January 1st in 2019 is when we started it. And that's when I started the, uh, to do 1 million push ups. So it was for the state thanking uh, police officers within the state. And we're in the state of Wisconsin. Right? Correct. It was actually officers locally and across our country. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so, so across could, the country. Yeah, well. all 3,142 counties. That's our goal. We want to at least connect with at least one police officer in each one of the counties across America. So how do you reach out to them? How do you get in contact with them and, and thank them? What is What strategies do you have? Uh, to make that happen and how far have you gotten with that or have you achieved it so the way we connect with police officers is we watch the news oftentimes we there's a couple websites that are geared towards law enforcement that kind of highlight um you know first responders that save people or that do heroic things or just do kind of interesting things and so the kids and i will typically uh look over those websites and we'll send handwritten thank you letters to those police officers. That's awesome. So that's one way we do it. The other way we do it is when we travel, uh, we try to coordinate with whatever department, um, you know, where we're traveling. Like we, we've gone to um, St. Paul, we went to Boston, down to Florida, uh, a number of um, departments. And so we let them know that we're in the area, kind of share what we're doing. And uh, if they invite us in, we come in, share a little bit of our message, thank them. and. And uh, that's how we do it. And then obviously, you know, we live in Wisconsin here. So, you know, there's police officers and, and such around here. So we, uh, if we see them and they're not busy, you know, we'll just pull up and say, thanks, appreciate what you're doing. 
So it's an in-person thank you along with the handwritten ones going out to various people. And I mean, think about it. When was the last time, and this goes to a question for the audience, but for us as well, when was the last time you received a handwritten thank you note for something you did? I mean, that's that's huge, right? It brightens your day. It makes, when I receive those, whether it can be even via text or email, but a handwritten note through the mail sends so much more uh, love and, and it lifts me up. And I challenge all of you to reach out to someone who's impacted your life, a hero in your life, uh, uh, could be a police officer, uh, someone in the emergency services or anyone. Reach out to them and send them a handwritten note. And you, you mentioned that you have kids, a group doing this. Is this through an organization you started or did you take along with? How did that, how did that come about? So it's just, a, it's something that, uh, it's just me and my three children. And, oh, okay. uh, so it's, and it's, it's, again, it's something that, it's important to me. I think service to our community, service to our country is very important. And I wanted to, inst I wanted to continue to instill that in my children and encourage them to look at the world, you know, like, outside of themselves that they're part of a bigger picture and that you know the ripple effect of how people impact their lives we may not we may not always recognize that but certainly we can feel it you know whether it's you know the first responders patrolling our communities at night when we're sleeping i mean there's there's an effect that they have on us that even even if we can't necessarily detect it um so again it's just i wanted to really in, and I continue to do it. I want to instill in my children the importance of recognizing that they're part of something bigger and to be appreciative of what people who serve do and how it contributes to the greater good for everybody. I love it, especially in this time. Uh, people who serve our communities and our country are hit really hard, and it's, it's great to reach out to them and tell them thank you for their service, for their effort, for their sacrifice uh, that they're doing for us. And I love love the fact that you're including your family with us, your three kids, and teaching them to to be grateful, to be uh, grateful is probably the best word for it, and thankful to everyone who is serving us and having that that service mindset, which is huge. I, I, do, I agree as well. I just, I, I think oftentimes, even myself, you know, we find ourselves kind of focused on ourselves or we're not necessarily as aware of how everybody who everybody who impacts us so it's it's just about heightening the sense of awareness and you talked mm -hmm. about the letter writing so we we get a lot of letters back from departments and police officers too expressing just what you said about the you know the last time they got a handwritten letter was years ago or right. never at all and uh, i think it really personalizes that that appreciation or that gesture and what we found in the letters and the phone calls and in return is how much it means to them that people would take the time perfect strangers you know and oftentimes it's it's communities that we've never even been to i mean right. so it, letters coming in from you know washington or oregon or someplace like that where like they think it's pretty neat that some you know a little family in wisconsin was you know thoughtful enough to to reach out and say you know thank you for you know saving that person from that wreck or getting that person out of a house uh, whatever the situation was. So just kind of neat that they, that their message of, you know, what they're trying to accomplish, you know, kind of ripple effects across the country and people recognize that. I think, I think it's huge to be aware of your surroundings in, in so many ways, right? Absolutely. For the mindset uh, for yourself. And that's one thing I talk about uh, and share with my audience is to be aware, be mindful of your surroundings. I mean, your physical surroundings, the house, the beautiful weather, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but also the community of people around you. And how many times do we get sucked into our day-to-day -day life, the, the things that we have to do every day, work, kids, shopping, meal prepping, whatever it is. And now we go, oh, hold on. Like there's so much, seems to be so much negativity in the news, but there are those glimmer of hopes. Uh, those things that we see in social media of this person doing this amazing thing. And sure, they might get their moment of fame or whatever on the news, but that fades pretty quick. And, and how cool is it because of social media nowadays, because, mm -hmm. because of the internet, that their special moment, the, their uh, moment that they really shine and gave back to the community, and I'm sure it's amongst many of their moments, was brought to light and shared and now seen across the globe to the point where people from Wisconsin can send a letter to someone out in wherever, Washington or Oregon or California or wherever it is, and express gratitude for them, saying thank you for that. And just seeing that, then you're getting letters back and you 
alone are this hub for it and, and showing people that, hey, we should be more grateful. We, we should be more thankful to the people who are sacrificing their lives, giving back to the community, helping themselves, which is absolutely phenomenal yeah. to see that because now you did this million push-up challenge. Did you meet it? Did you do a million push-ups last year? So I finished the one minute push up last year on December 31st at the Green Bay Police Department in front of their roll call. So it was a pretty special moment. And uh, yeah, so it was uh, it was an accomplishment that, you know, was pretty emotional. But again, I, I kept it in perspective of, you know, it, it really isn't about me. It's, right. it's about being an example to other people to, you know, demonstrate that, you know, we still have a lot we can do and we can contribute to others in a variety of ways and we use the gifts that we have. And for me, I mean, it's, I mean, there's nothing special about doing a push up, you know, but when you string a million together, it, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes something special that might influence somebody else or inspire somebody else to kind of look at what are their gifts and what can I do to contribute to somebody else's experience. It becomes extraordinary. You're doing mm -hmm. the things that you can do and doing them regularly and compounding that effect to then mm -hmm. make it grow. And that's that's everything in life, right? You do it enough consistently, it grows. But how can you take a gift? I'm asking this to the people listening or watching now. How can you take your gifts you have and use them to help the others? It doesn't have to be a million push-ups, but what can you do to help the people around you? What I love about Nate is, as I said, he's that beacon. He's People see him and are inspired, right? He's our superhero in the sense of bringing, of taking his light and he's the mirror shining it on the other people who are doing great things. And that is absolutely incredible to see him do that, to bring awareness. Mm -hmm. And I challenge you to help bring awareness to the people around you who are your superheroes. So that was last year. You did a million push-ups. you conquered that goal, yeah. and you brought awareness to a lot of people and made some great memories for your kids and for other people and, and amazing moments. So now you're on a bigger mission, uh, or a different mission, I should say, of stringing together, to, oh, just the same old push-up, but, you know, to 1.5 million mm -hmm. now. Um, what is your focus with this year's challenge? So after the million push-ups, um, I, I really... I really wanted to break the world record. And so as, as last year unfolded, um, I became, I was aware of the world record prior to that, but I really started studying kind of what the world record was, which was $1.5 million, 1.5 million. I'll get to the $1.5 million, <laughs> but that's the real important number. Um, it's 1.5 million push-ups, And that was set back in 1989 by an Englishman named Patty Doyle, who I reached out to and I've chatted with a few times. Nice. And so that was the world record. So I really, after, after doing a million push-ups, I thought, well, you know, why I'm never going to be in this great of shape again. <laughs> so why not attempt the world record January 1, 2020? And, uh, so that's what I did. I, I started out with that and probably about February, mid February, I developed some real stiffness in my shoulder mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it just was not productive to work through. So I kind of suspended things and I thought about things and it was a challenging time because I was, I was in good shape and I felt I had a good routine and a good pattern, but as often in life, things don't always work out the way that we, uh, envision. And so that setback created probably the biggest opportunity and that's what I'm currently doing. So I rested up, recovered, I actually did 50 miles around the house, too. I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, my gosh. No, I didn't. Well, so COVID came out, obviously, and 2020 has been a crazy situation. And so we're all locked in our house, and I think it was in March. And so everything was like stay at home, stay at home. And everyone was scared and nervous. Mm -hmm. And so I was watching, um, I, I don't know, I, I watched the news, and some guy in France ran a marathon on his balcony. And huh. um, so it, that, you know... Things like that really interest me. And so I, it got me thinking, like, well, if this guy can run a marathon on a balcony, why can't I run 50 miles around my house? Wow. So I put together the Around the House 50 in March, and I think it was like on the 28th maybe or whatever, 26th. I ran 50 miles around my house in circles and raised about 2500 for the Oshkosh area United Way in support of the COVID-19 fund. So that money um, went towards personal protective gear for uh, those that need it. And I also collected some money for our Winnick County Police Department in the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department to, to buy um, PPEs and cleaning supplies. So, 
So in the meantime, between the million push-ups and what I'm current in now, I decided to do a few circles around the house. <laughs> so between going from one charity and helping other people and starting this next one, and COVID happened and, and that's life got crazy, you're like, I don't know, I'll just run around the house and let's raise some money for these awesome organizations. And uh, it's people like you who have that servant mindset and find ways of making it happen. Most people just went, ah, COVID happened, I'm just going to sit back, watch Netflix or try working from home and, and teaching from home or whatever it is and and be flustered about you had to do that with your kids and all that. But mm -hmm. on top of it, you're like, no, I'm going to raise some money for for these people and organizations that I care about that help and give back. Yeah, I mean, it, absolutely. And it's, again, I think it's an example of regard. I mean, the situation, you know, currently, I mean, there's so many challenges that we, I mean, and everybody has personal challenges in their lives and the situations are never ideal. Um, I try to the best of my ability to look for, okay, so what are the opportunities? So what can I do versus what can I do? And so like, that's where the around the house 50 came. Like, you know, I, I gotta stay home. Okay, well, what can I do? I wanna run around my house for 50 miles. And that was very challenging. Um, there were some dark moments. I mean, I'm not somebody who, you know, can necessarily go that distance with ease. Um, it was I, all in one shot. 17 and a half hours it took me. It was cold, wow. it was wet, it was rainy, it was muddy, it was just, I ruined my yard. Um, <laughs> but it was, you know, I, I again, I, I at that point in time, our, our perception of COVID-19 and what, you know, what the future looked like, there was a lot of uncertainty and it was a scary time. I mean, it, you know, in, in our lifetimes, we've never experienced something like right. that. So the importance of having personal protective gear, the importance of, you know, the first responders or the nurses or the doctors having, you know, the high, most hygienic stuff that they can get, you know, that that's what drove me. So like during some very dark moments during that, um, you know, that adventure, I just, I kept it in perspective that, you know, my struggles of walking around the house in circles, it's nothing compared to what maybe, you know, a nurse is experiencing and, you know, the uncertainty of, you right. know, like dealing with or working with somebody who's potentially got COVID-19. So I just, I, I always try to keep that perspective because it helps me, you know, realize that, you know, walking around the house for 50 miles, it really isn't that big of a deal in comparison to real struggles. Right. So you kept it in balance with, you know, your reason why and, and yeah. noticed, put that uh, to help you through those dark times, which is, which is huge. So you, you hinted at this a little bit before and that, okay, this happened in the meantime between uh, the million push-ups and 1.5 million push-ups after the shoulder uh, injury or rehab now that you've gone through it and you feel really good, feel prepped up for it. And then you mentioned $1.5 million. Well, okay, equals the number of push-ups, a dollar a push-up. Yeah. But what's, what is that all about? So as the as we talked about, the world record for the most push-ups in 365 days is 1.5 million in like 2:30. So it's change. Um, so as I was recouping and kind of figuring out, you know, if I would give it a go and what I could do, I started thinking like, well, 1.5 million dollars. Like that'd be kind of cool if I could if I could raise 1.5 million dollars, one dollar push-up for this challenge, and it helped keep me honest, help keep me hungry and motivated and it fits right into kind of my perception of things like you know most of what I do is nothing to do with me it's about shining a light on other people that are you know they're true heroes and true um, warriors in our community and um, so I had learned about the Tunnel to Towers Foundation uh, in 2019 and it's a foundation out of New York that came about in uh, as a result of the terror attacks on 9-11 back in 2001 and Steven Stiller, Stiller was a firefighter who got the call, rushed the towers and then ultimately gave his life saving um, you know the people trying to escape the towers and his brothers and sisters started the Tunnel to Towers Foundation because Stephen ran from the tunnel up to the towers and ultimately you know gave his life saving wow. um, you know the citizens of New York that were trapped. So this foundation it has a, a number of different programs, and they they are they support the families of fallen first responders. They build smart homes for uh, catastrophically injured first responders, and they do the same thing with our military. So, if a military uh, member is killed in action, they leave behind uh, a family with young children. That foundation steps in and pays off that mortgage, so that that family can have some stability in. 
in, given the situation with the loss of their you know their loved one and it's the same with the fallen first responder home program so if a police officer a firefighter is killed in the line of duty and they leave behind a young family that foundation steps in and take over that mortgage so those kids can stay in that house so as i said a while back every setback creates tremendous opportunity and so initially back in february when i injured my shoulder yeah, I, I was bummed and i'm like you know like because again at that point i, I was just doing the i was going to try to break the world record and right. i thought you know uh, you know selfishly me and so get injured and i run around the house for a little bit and put things in perspective and i i decided to reach out to the talented towers foundation and say look this is what i'm thinking this is what i'd like to do you know what are your thoughts and uh so we we had a couple conversations um had a couple phone calls and and you know exchanged a lot of ideas and they ultimately decided that they'd support it and they thought it was a good idea so january or june 14th of 2020 i started the 1.5 million push-up challenge to wow. break the world record and it's coupled with 1.5 million dollars for their fallen first responder home program and um so my goal is the the number that's most important to me that gets me up at 3 30 every morning is 1.5 million dollars and it it's not it, it's a big number and it sounds you know almost crazy to think that you know a little guy from Winnicott or an old guy from Winnicott <laughs> could maybe potentially raise 1.5 million dollars uh for a foundation but I, I again i i think if i don't dream big and set big goals then you know it's not going to happen so i i that's kind of where it came about i i love the fact that you pointed on to set big goals for yourself yeah. and you know push yourself outside your comfort zone to push yourself to grow and not only did you do that because you know that's something we talk about with jones at four and that's what i help clients with and all that but a lot of the time those goals are for you personally right mm -hmm. and, which is good and we need them mm -hmm. And you have the goals like that too, I'm sure. But you also then not only had goals for yourself, but then you're like, how can I make this big goal to influence and impact other people and help others? Correct. Just that service mindset is is something to be looked at and applauded mm -hmm. because it's just it's so incredible. So you went, all right, I'd like to break 1.5 uh, the world record and do 1.5 million push-ups. Cool. Oh man, I'm injured. Okay, I want to run the house a little bit. And you know, let's instead of doing this for me, let's do this for something mm -hmm. bigger. For some for a organization, tunnel tunnel to towers, which I believe in, I want to support. And they looked at what you're offered and said, Yes, let's do this, let's make this happen. And now what gets you up at 3:30 in the morning, which is ungodly early. Love it, love that you do that. I used to do that, but not for that reason. So that's I applaud you for doing it that. Uh and really to to impact, because I mean, okay, it's $1.5 million. Great, it's a nice number. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that number, it's the lives that that number is going to impact. Because it's gonna impact not just one person's lives, but countless other people. And so that is absolutely phenomenal. How, mm -hmm. do, how do people, I'll just cut to the chase with it, how do people help you raise $1.5 million? How does that, do they watch you do push-ups and throw dollars on you as you're doing them, <laughs> or, or how does that work? So there's been a couple of um, events that I've done where I've done push-ups out in public. The other, the, the very simple way is to visit tunneltodollars.org and on their homepage they have, there's a, a push-through link that with a picture of me and carrying an American flag and it leads you right to their fundraiser. Um, so that's the simplest way to uh, donate to our cause, our charity. And, um, you know, but again, I mean, if, if I'm doing push-ups in public, people you know, get to <laughs> throw some cash my way as well, and then right. that money gets donated as well. So, but it's it's real simple just to go to their website, and that's that's the best way of doing it. Make it easy. Go to tunneltotowers.org. Correct. And those will be in the show notes too. So if you are driving or running or whatever, just head to our website, spencermjones.com, and we'll put the link in there uh, under this episode to tunneltotowers.org. Or if you can remember that, which it's not too hard, uh, just head there as well and donate under the push through, you said? Yeah, so the kind of the, the catchphrase that I have is push through and like that that's, I, th I think symbolic to a lot of things because again we all have to push through whatever it is that we're we're up against whatever challenge we have whatever goal we have typically it doesn't go as planned so we got to <laughs> push through a lot of obstacles in route to 
our ultimate goal. So that's kind of the, the slogan, I, I think maybe is the word, it. but that's kind of what I came up with. And I, I think it, it fits with a lot of things because, you know, I talk about the push through and again, like, you know, push ups are what, uh, what I do, but what, what do you do and what are your goals? What are your challenges? And like I was sharing with you before we started talking uh, on camera here, you know, I was at my son's football game and a lady behind me was talking about, you know, running two miles and that being a big accomplishment. And the lady next door was giving her some encouragement. So again, it's, you know, not everybody does push ups. I mean, we, we all have things that we're working towards that we have to figure out how do I push through some of the obstacles and challenges that come our way, whether they're seen or whether they, they, they come up just as a result of living life. So push through. I, I love it. And yeah, I want to dive into that model, that slogan a little bit, because it's, mm -hmm. it's such a great slogan. Um, and I almost lost my train of thought. I got so obsessed with that. Um, you're, but you're right. Like we all have barriers in life. We all go through, as I mentioned, like valleys, dark moments in our lives, but even just through life, they throw up roadblocks, right? Things mm -hmm. happen. You're told no, you, whatever you get roadblocks in life and you have to push through. And I talk about it in the sense of you have to find the learning thing from that. What can you learn from that experience? Pick yourself up after you got knocked down mm -hmm. and keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Figure out what you need to do and push through yeah. to keep going towards that goal, that dream, whatever it is for you. And you might have to course correct, but that's okay. Um, so I, I love it. And let's chat about that in a little bit. But to wrap up the, the Tunnels to Towers, mm -hmm. How so we're recording this? It's uh October 10th, uh, the day that we're recording this right now in 2020. So you are, um, I could do math like four ish months into this thing, right? So, yep, just over four months. So, I just passed, I think it's 330,000 push ups, and uh, we've raised almost $28,000 so far. That's awesome. So, 330,000 push ups already, mm -hmm. and 28,000 raised. Dollars, yeah. $28,000 raised already. So folks, seriously, help him out, help him reach his goal, help him push through and help other people, help the people who serve the communities. Don't just, you know, think about what you can do with that for yourself, but the money you donate, it doesn't go to him, it goes to help other people, right? Shine your light uh, and shine with your dollars to other people. But also with that, what can you do? I'm going to repeat what, what Nate said. What can you do to shine a light on the people who are superheroes in your life, the people who uh, inspire you, who encourage you, who do great things, mm -hmm. small or big, right? It could be huge things or tiny things. Uh, how can you support them? How can you tell them thank you? How can you lift them up? And, and maybe you do a fundraiser. Maybe you come up with your own way to do something simple and basic, but over and over again, or whatever it is, right? Have a bake sale. I mean, it could be anything, but give back. I think is a big thing is giving back to your community, giving back to people, organizations that you care about. I love it. Any comments about any of that to help people push through and, and help them, their community? I think for me, like the, the biggest thing that I found, especially in 2020, which has been a year like none of us have ever <laughs> experienced, we recognized, you know, when the initial wave of the COVID was upon us and it was new, the, you know, the truck drivers, the farmers, the store clerk, the people in our communities that are not nameless and faceless, but we're not necessarily, I would say, prior to that, you know, we weren't going out of our way to, to thank a truck driver or a store clerk. Um, but I think the one of the silver linings of COVID is recognizing that we're how dependent we are on mm -hmm. the people in our community. And again, just looking for opportunities to say thank you and be aware and be appreciative of the things in our life that we do have. Um, you know, sometimes during a crisis like this, it, it gives us a moment to pause and consider that. And I think it makes our experience much more rich and it makes the experience of somebody else much more rich when we, when we realize that and we express that and acknowledge that. Because I think, you know, as people, we like to be acknowledged and we like to real, you know, we like to feel like, you know, what we're doing matters and that it's important and that somebody recognizes it. And, uh, so again, like whatever it is that, you know, that people do. And Nikki mentioned, you know, a bake sale or, you know, or a fundraiser. I mean, you know, that stuff is great. And a thank you costs nothing. And what I, what I found and what our family has found, that's been one of the best things that we've been able to do. It doesn't cost a thing to say thank you and to acknowledge somebody else's work or somebody else's effort. 
and uh, they find it to be pretty meaningful. Uh, words can mean so much, and, and more than dollars in, in many ways. Absolutely, absolutely. So be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the people giving back and just what you have around you, the, the blessings uh, that you have around you and say thank you Absolutely. And recognize it. Hey everyone, Spencer Jones, and I'm sorry to butt in like this, but I'll keep this really short and sweet. I wanna help you live your life to the max. I wanna help you chase your passions to get the most out of life. And I wrote a book to help you do that. It's my latest book, it's called Chase Your Passions. It's available on Amazon and I know it can help you change your life and help you live your life to the max. It's basically in the book, I walk you through how to create the ultimate roadmap to success. Whatever that success looks like for you, it walks you through it. Everybody has a different roadmap because everybody's dream, everybody's goal is different. So everybody's roadmap is gonna be different. But this book helps you, guides you in creating your personal roadmap to success. So folks, don't delay. Get on Amazon and just look up Chase Your Passions. I put Spencer Jones in there too, just to be safe, so it pulls up right away. Or go to my website, spencermjones.com, and get your copy of it today. And heck, get the Priorities of Practice journal with it because that companion journal, mm, that makes it that much sweeter. All right, folks, thanks for listening. I told you I'd keep it short and sweet. Catch you soon. So we got a little bit of time. I'd love to dive into your your slogan, your motto of push through. Mm -hmm. How? When did you come up with that? If you if you remember, and how? So, I wanted to have, I wanted to have a slogan. So I, I was thinking about in two thousand nineteen when I was doing my push ups. You know, obviously that was developing the routine of knocking out two thousand seven hundred forty push ups a day is challenging and it was challenging in the beginning so it, there was a lot of um there's a lot of moments where you, you know you find yourself getting stuck or you find yourself having to make a sacrifice that you didn't necessarily want to make and so like you know obviously push up is you know what i what i'm doing and so but you know like pushing through it just kind of naturally came about and i just thought that you know the push up is a is, is symbolic in a number of ways for me personally it's you know oftentimes we we hit the floor we you know we hit rock bottom and we have to push ourselves back up so the push up you know is symbolic for me for a number of reasons in my personal experiences but again you know after you push yourself up you know what do you do with that and and that is pushing through whatever the challenge is so i think that's where it came from in part the other you know the other reason i do what i do it's uh it's for my kids and i'll try to say this without getting emotional because it's so important to me but you know when i did the million push-ups i really wanted them to witness something that only three people or four people that I've been able to confirm had did something. And I wanted them to have a firsthand experience that just because something's hard or it looks like it's impossible, doesn't mean that it's not something that you should pursue. Because I, I really wanted to instill in them what that big goal was and that no matter what anyone said or no matter if it's ever been done or not, that they witnessed their dad do that. So when they get big or when they get older, because they're little yet, um, they're 13, uh, 11 and 9 that they uh you know that they think back at this time and they think about like well if dad can get up and do you know whatever many push-ups i think i could find the strength to do whatever it is that i pursue i want to pursue so i really i, I mean you know the the dirty little secret is <laughs> a lot of this is to impact my children as well and to model to them so that they can pursue whatever it is that they you know choose when they're old enough i mean and again it's push-ups is my thing and you know who knows what their thing is but i guarantee whatever they 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 chase there's going to be challenges and there's going to be you know attractive excuses and alternative things that they want to do excuse me and uh but i hope that i model that you know it can be done even if it's only been done by a few people I, I love that, and I love the fact that you are a role model to them or attempting to be, yeah. uh, whether they might recognize it or not at the time, but seeing what, what look what Dad's doing. He is doing, he's pushing through, right? It's pushing through to something that's extremely hard to do, getting that many push-ups in. Only three or four people in the entire world that we know of have done that, and, and they're saying, well, my dad could do that. 
I could do something, or I could be pushing through. I'm, I'm struggling with assignment in mm-hmm. school. This even something small, like oh, I need to write this paper, mm-hmm. and oh no, I need to push through. I need to do this because if my dad could do that, I can do this. And to be that role model for them is is huge and amazing. And I, I'm sure they look up to you and and see that. And then not just your kids, but all the kids mm-hmm. and and other people, adults and kids alike can see you and say, if he can do that, what can I do? Yeah. What can I push through in my life to to better myself, to be a, a role model to other people or to, to reach my goal or help other people, whatever it is. Um, but if he can do that, I can do that, whether it's been done or not before. And that's such a huge message to share. It is, and I, and I, and I think you hit it right on the head too, because I, in my own life, I've often used that association when I'm facing something, like that if this person can do this, then how can I not do this? I mean, when I first started doing triathlon, I was really interested in, um, I think his name is Dick Hoyt is his name, and he, he pushes his son, who is disabled, mm-hmm. through the triathlon, and he's pushed his son through uh, an entire Ironman triathlon, yep. which is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a full marathon at 26.2 miles. And so this guy pushed his, he, he swam with his son on a boat, he had a bike specially made, and he biked the whole way with his, his son on the front, and then he had a stroller that he pushed the the um, full 26.2 miles at the Hawaii Ironman. And I remember watching that bawling, and I'm thinking to myself, like, if that guy can do that, mm-hmm. I mean, I can do it. I mean, I could do that. And so, like, I use that association a lot with whatever it is that that I'm, you know, thinking about. And, uh, and again, I, I hope that that's the association that my kids use when they're adults. Because, you know, right now, you know, I mean, they always, you know, they call me old man and pops or <laughs> and uh, so we have some laughs about it but I think the you know it's not me lecturing them it's them just absorbing what it is that dad's doing they witness what dad does and hopefully when you know they're old or I'm dead and gone that they can use that to pursue whatever it is and I, and I hope it's a you know it's something that again that's outside of themselves that they're you know that they're working to improve somebody else's experience that's service mindset that's service absolutely that's that's amazing what what advice would you give the people listening and watching uh because you've already mentioned it to your kids uh, and possibly that maybe your kids will watch this or listen to this and it would be advice to them as well what advice would you give someone who has a big goal um whatever it is and they it's big, it's scary, it's hairy, it's audacious. They're, they're nervous to go after it. Mm-hmm. What advice can you give them to help them reach their goal and to push through when times get tough? I think not being afraid of failing is a big thing. I spent a lot of years kind of afraid to do things and I was nervous about what people might think. And once I, and, and I think that's something that we all probably struggle with to various degrees throughout our lives, being you know uncertain if I can do something or not. But what I found is if I'm not afraid to fail, then I'm much more freer to pursue. And if I'm not as worried about what it is that you're thinking, I can focus more on what I need to think about in order to accomplish my goal. And I just, I think having, Having a big goal is fine. I mean, like, you know, like, so like for me, the way I break down, so I have to do 1.5 million push-ups in a year. I mean, just saying that sounds <laughs> insane. I mean, I can't even wrap my head around how that is because I there's so much of that that I can't control. Right. So I focus solely, I, I try to, I focus solely on what I can control. And what I can control is my effort, my schedule, in my thinking. Mm-hmm. And those are the things that I, I try to focus the most attention on. If I start thinking about, I mean, what is it, October, what, 10th? Yeah. yeah. So if I start thinking about, you know, something in November, like, well, I got this going on, or I got, then I'm I'm out of my control zone. I, I don't control what goes on. I mean, I don't even know if November's happening yet for me. Right. I don't know that. But what I do know is this afternoon's happening for me. And so I know exactly what I gotta do when I'm done with this interview to knock out what I got to knock out for the day. And, uh, and that's, that's how I, I approach it. And so I do a lot of self-talk, I do a lot of visualization, and I'm very uh, disciplined with my plan. And uh, we were kind of joking around before, and you know, like how do you do um, you know, 4,000 push-ups a day? <laughs> 
I, mean, I still can't imagine doing four. Well, the first thing is you have to have no life. I mean, because so, <laughs> you don't have time. To, so you have to make sacrifices. Right. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But the running joke is that I have you know absolutely no life, which <laughs> you know it might be true. But you know, but that's again like that's okay because I'm in control of what it is that I want to do. If I want to do something different, then I have that. I can do that. But I'm choosing to do this and make that sacrifice, and so that's that's good to go for me. So again, I just I think you know your effort and your schedule are very important in breaking things down into what you can control because there's so much that you can't control right but there if we spend the bulk of our time focused on that then we're missing many opportunities so it's to me it's i'm very aware of what today right now looks like and then tomorrow and then whatever happens on monday or whatever that day is I'll figure that out tomorrow. That's when I'll start planning for that. So it's very, very small chunks, and I just manage that chunk, and hopefully at the end of all this, I raise that $1.5 million for that foundation. I think that's a fantastic mindset, and I'm just gonna boil it down to a couple things here mm -hmm. just to break it down. Um, one is you, you have big goals, so you, you are looking to the future saying, okay, in a year I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. But then you break that big goal down into those smaller tasks, into your daily tasks. And then, first of all, you're not afraid to fail, mm -hmm. right? Because if you, if you fail, well, you're going to learn something from it, and then you can learn and grow and be better next time. But usually the failure might, usually it's not something big and catastrophic, but it's a way for you to adjust and learn. So it's a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to fail is a big thing. But then also your mindset, and in, within your mindset of not going to fail, it's also, I'm, I'm going to control the controllables. There's right. a lot in the world that I cannot control, a lot of things happening in my life that I can't control, but I can. what I can control is how I address it, how I deal with those things. Mm -hmm. And then in this regard, what does my schedule look like? Mm -hmm. What is my mindset about this? How am I thinking about this? And you are taking control of your controllables. Absolutely. And that's huge. I think so many people struggle with that and they get so flustered and worried by all these things that they can't control. Mm -hmm. And that causes people stress and anxiety. But if you can learn to control the controllables, within some degree and it takes practice it takes sure. time takes discipline mm -hmm. but once you do man the world's your oyster because you can accomplish so much because you can stay focused and you can be happier in your life because mm -hmm. you're not stressed you're not overwhelmed you're not being anxious by all the uncontrollables because you are taking control of what you can absolutely and I, I think that's excellent advice for for everyone i think you're, you're exactly and that's and that's that's what i do and what i found is like the minute i start focusing on things that i can't control it it really it's unmotivating it becomes mm -hmm. overwhelming and i become distracted with things that really I, I can't control but i find myself focusing on them and it takes me off course and then I get those small chunks start to break apart and then once those small chunks break apart then perhaps the big goal um you know, will, will fall apart as well. So I just, my, my mindset every day is just, okay, so I got to get out of bed and I got to, you know, and I don't want to get out of bed, you know, but I got to get out of bed because I know if I don't get out of bed, then that screws up the whole rest of the day. So it's just, uh, it, it's very repetitive, but I find that it works and, and I have to be flexible too, because I, you know, I'm a parent of three young children who are involved in activities as much as they can with the current situation. I work full time and, you know, and I, again, I don't have much of a life outside of that <laughs> right now, but, uh, you know, there is, you know, I just don't have the luxury of sitting in my, you know, house and doing push ups. And the other mindset that I, I think is important when we, when we, think about goals or think about things that we wish to accomplish. And we kind of touched a little bit is about the association. So people will ask me, so this 4,000, I mean, how in the world do you do 4,000 pushups a day? Like that must be hard. And I say, yeah, it is hard, but it's not as hard as what some firefighters have to mm -hmm. deal with. I mean, it's not as hard as trying to pull, you know, a family out of a burning house. You know, I'm sitting in my living room in my sweatpants doing pushups. I mean, how hard is that? I mean, it's it's not hard. So when I when I use the association of what real hard work looks like, I mean, this is simple. I mean, it's simple to sit and do push-ups, relatively speaking. Right. And that's how I think about it because I'm not doing anything remarkable. These people, the first responders who are impacting our community, saving people, those are the real. They're doing the real work. I mean, that work is in in like as and I liked how you said like my mission is to to shine a light on them like it's not this is not about nate carroll this is about that firefighter that police officer that first responder who is 
intervening in a situation. And one of the things I think about too, which really inspires me, is especially with first responders, is you know at any moment they're willing to trade their safety for my life, and I think that's something that should be you know honored. And again, like any inconvenience that I have uh, associated with sitting in my living room <laughs> in the safe confines of that, drinking coffee, watching TV, doing whatever, you know, it's a small price to pay for what these men and women really do in our communities. So you put it into perspective otherwise perspective. You, and that's perspective is huge in life and, yeah. and putting what you, what you do and your life into perspective helps and it helps motivate you mm -hmm. and it, and make sure that you use it for your motivation. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm going to say one thing Well, you said pushups aren't easy and it's something, something special. Okay, sure. Almost everyone can do pushups, but what you are doing is special because you are stringing together something that only three or four people in the entire world have ever done before. Mm -hmm. And not only are you just doing it for, or going for that goal of breaking the world record, you are also doing something extremely special and helping others through it. You are serving others. You are helping other people have a better life because of doing something quote unquote simple, mm -hmm. uh, something easy or basic, uh, you know, in perspective to running to a burning building, I mean, I, I've never done it. I can't imagine running to a burning building. I also can't imagine doing 4,000 push-ups in a day. <laughs> um, so while it's simple, you still are taking that and making a huge impact with it. And I, I think it's something special and amazing and incredible. Well, so, thank you. I appreciate that. Great job. And, one, and I'll just say one other thing, too, like that I, that I think about, is it, which is neat, is that there's nothing remarkable about my athletic ability either. I mean, so there's, I'm a very normal person. I don't have any, you know, I'm not Superman, and there's nothing like that. I mean, so, and it's, it's, it's important, I think, that sometimes when we're talking about this amount of people think that that's, you know, astronomical, but it's a very humble, simple person. And so in what I use with that is that anybody can do whatever they mm -hmm. work towards. So you don't have to be a professional athlete to accomplish something significant. You can be ordinary, just like me. I love it. What, what a great message to share. You set your mind to a goal, make it big, help others with it if, if you can, and push through. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's perfect. How can people um, learn more about you, help you out, and, and this challenge? We talked about tunnelstotowers.org already, um, but how can they learn more about you and other challenges? Because I got a feeling you, you got more up your sleeve here. I'm always looking. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple up my sleeve. I mean, I think if people want to connect with me, they can connect with me on social media. Um, I'm, I, I post predominantly on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I do have a Facebook as well. Um, so, but if people are interested, they can follow along with my challenge. I typically post on uh, Instagram every day, a video of me doing push-ups. And, uh, the other thing that I do is I, I play the guitar and I play the Star Spangled Banner and I'll send tributes to, uh, fallen first responders or police officers or firefighters, uh, songs or just the, the, the Star Spangled Banner and like a tribute to them. So, nice. yeah. So if they're, interested in following my um you know i guess quest uh, that'd be the place to check it out oh do you know your handle offhand i'm just not you can let me know and i can put it up nathaniel in a t h a n i e l period lewis l-o-u-i-s period carol c-a-r-r-o-l-l -L. perfect so thank you so much and that will be if you didn't see it on the screen if you're listening to this uh, it'll be in the show notes uh, as well at spencermjones.com. And you can make sure make sure you follow him, follow everything he's doing, because it is incredible. He is a humble guy. He's your average Joe, but not just sitting there drinking coffee. Although I love the fact you drink coffee. That's awesome. Um, but you are shining a light on other people and being a servant to the world and showing other people, showing your kids and other people that it's okay to be aware of these other people and to say thank you and to use your gifts, ordinary, amazing, whatever gifts you have to help and inspire others. So congratulations and thank you so much. Thank you. Any last bit of words before we head off? No, I just, I, I mean, again, I, I always encourage people to use their gifts and whatever it is that they can do, there's many opportunities to contribute to others regardless of situation or circumstance. And uh, I think it's, it, it helps us feel more connected to people. It helps us feel more energized, and uh, it gives us a greater sense of purpose when we can 
we can use our gifts to impact other people in a positive way. I, I couldn't agree more. I am going to lay down a challenge to all of you. Take a challenge today or sometime within this next week to say thank you. Say thank you to someone who matters to you. It could be your spouse, your kids, and even more so, see if you can reach out to someone in the community, a hero in your community, or someone in your life who has given something to you, who, who has been there to, for you, who has supported you, or someone who is a hero. Reach out and say thank you. Use your gifts to help them. So folks, let us know. Take on that challenge. Let us know what you did, because I would like to reach out to you and say thank you by putting it in the comments below or email us, right, and tell us. Well, folks, take on that challenge. Check out Nate Carroll and all the stuff he's doing. Check out Tunnels to Towers, tunnel2towers.org. Get that right there. And we will catch you all in the next episode of the Jones and Four Show. Until later, guys, we will catch you all then.